Hi guys. Hi guys, we live. I'm just putting an Elvis thing on in the background, as you do. No, I'm not playing. Um, no, I'm not putting Nixon on. I mean, not Nixon. Um, Trump on. Is that why I mentioned Nixon? Right. YouTube will tell us off. Uh, I've got a new camera, so we might sound slightly different, hopefully better quality. Um, let me just face it to me just a little bit more. Ooh, we can't go too much. We've got our Elvis in the background. Now, can we get a bit nearer? I think that's about as good as we're going to get. So I've just been for a run, so I'm sweaty. I've done a bit of weightlifting. I had a bit of dinner. I had lamb and pork. And uh, I've had this delivered. See this? This is one of these that hold my phone. But it's one that doesn't wobble. It doesn't wobble. So... When I'm doing my dog walks, you don't have to hear, it should prevent you guys from seeing my bump, bump, bump every time I take a step. So never used one before. Gimbal stabilizer to stop the bouncing when I walk the dogs when we do a live. So two new, th two new toys, a new camera that is supposed to be um, a better sound quality and better visually and do like, Oh, thank you. You can tell the difference, can you? Oh, that's good, Karen. And do I sound okay? Does the sound sound okay? And of course, new cup of tea. Cup of tea, guys. Now, I'm just trying to get the right height. I could be this height. Let me just go lower. Or this height. Oh, I think that height's better. I think this height is better. Okay, right. The sound is good, yes. So, um, well, I'm quite excited about using this on a dog walk. I am seriously, I'm excited about using it. So we'll just come over to this angle a bit just so that we can try and, I can try and face you as I'm messaging. Now, do we remember we were doing um, a questionnaire? I'm gonna wait a few minutes. We were doing this questionnaire and we'd only done question one. Were you here, Jane? Were you here, Karen? We'd only done question one. So we're going to do that in a minute. Um, I do think let's give people a few minutes to join us. Yes. So uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure when my wife's going to be home. Now, if she does come back, I'm going to have to end it. Um, but... It's not a problem if I do, because I was going to do another one at um, 3.30 UK time. But hopefully I don't have to. I've got an hour now, as long as my wife doesn't come home and kick me out, which she might do. So, right. Obviously, my wife does give me a hard time about being on the laptop all the time. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. So don't worry, guys. I don't do as I'm told. Uh, well, I don't most of the time. So we're going to do the questionnaire. Now, something, a couple of things. I uh, had to go off. My phone went off. All right. Okay. So we, but luckily, we only did question one. So we got lots more questions. Um, I'll quickly now go on the, the messenger. And I'm going to quickly just say we are live. I've already said live soon, live now. I know that you guys are having problems with being notified. There's nothing I can do about it other than get you to join the Facebook so that I can tell you 
through Facebook. Who's that talking? That's Michelle. Michelle, we're live. Come on. Michelle, are you here? Do you do any of you have a tea or a coffee with you? We're in Southwest UK. The name's Louis. We are defending Elvis Presley. Fans want the truth with Team Elvis. Right. Hi, Pamela. You got your tea? Do you know what? I wish I wish I could give you guys a, an actual time. I wish I could, yeah? But as you know, I have five kids. Let me just get this. There we go. There we go. Right. So don't like to be too close, you know, man. Let's just get this. I like to I like to be a, a good central position. That's good. Um, I can't give you a time. I can't give you time. I've got five kids. Just in case you are wondering, all five of my kids are with my wife. <laughs> Just in case. So I'm, my wife was 22 when I met her. Um, I was in my 30s. <clears throat> and we had five kids. We had three very quickly over the space of probably four to five years. We were never going to have any more kids ever. And it, I don't know what to say. Oh, no, we got married. We got married um, <clears throat> quite a few years after we met. I reckon about 10 years after we met, we got married. We were engaged straight away. We got engaged after three months. Yeah. Um, it was definitely love at first sight. It was definitely a, everything you could dream of. Yeah. Um, and then on my wedding speech, I just told a joke. I just, on my wedding speech, I stood up, stood up in front of the crowd, and I've got this on film. One day I'll play it you. And I said to the crowd, just for a joke, we're going to make a baby tonight. Because obviously we we stayed at the, where we got married, we stayed, we, we slept there as well, yeah? It was a hotel. So just for a joke, guys, I just said to the crowd, and they all started laughing, we're going to make a baby tonight. Didn't mean it. I was just having a joke. What happens? What happens, guys? You tell me. Go on. I dare you to say it to me. None of you are going to say it. Um. <laughs> oh, sorry. I did a Priscilla Presley. Nine months later. Nine months later. I bloody baby <laughs> which which i'm not gonna lie i was shocked absolutely shocked like because i was i'm way too old to have have another kid way too old right and um so here's me right because you know guys i'm 57 yeah here's me who was never gonna have any more kids at 50 years old I've got a baby on the way. And I, I was like, just so you know, I'm very old fashioned. So I'm against abortions. Yeah, I, do, I complete a, a bit too much information, but I'm Christian man. I just I'm against it. Yeah, I'm old fashioned. Yeah. Um, no, no judgment. It's just the way I am. Old fashioned Greek Cypria upbringing, old fashioned. And um, so to, so we've got one new child, which is Tino. Yeah. And um, which we all adore, worship. No, 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 sorry. No, Yasmin, Yasmin. So we've got lovely Yasmin. Well, don't forget, this is the fourth child. So we have three kids. They're all getting on, growing up. They're all over 10. Much easier to deal with when they're older. Yeah, no more kids. I, I say this thing at the wedding. Nine months later, we have a baby, right? So listen, I, I announced it at the wedding night. We're going to make a baby. We have Yasmin, beautiful Yasmin. Yeah. That, there's no way we were going to have another baby. Anyway, so one day my wife, uh, I hope you don't mind me telling this story. This is a true story, guys. Do you mind me telling it? Seriously, do you mind me telling it? Then we'll talk about Elvis. So one day um, my, my wife says to me, 
oh, I think I should do a pregnancy test. I went, no. I said, because she, um, she was on the pill. Yeah. Do you know what a pill is in America? A lot of you are in America. Um, uh, obviously, Canada, UK, Australia. So my wife says to me, oh, I need to, don't forget, Yasmin has been born now. She's um, a couple of years old. Oh, Debbie, you're so lucky. Uh, so this is so right. So my wife says to me, um, I think I should do a pregnancy test. I went, what are you on about? You're on the pill. You're on the pill. There's no way that you, um, this is a true story. She says, oh, I did miss a couple of days. <laughs> anyway, so she does the pregnancy test. Good swimmers. She does the pregnancy test, guys. And negative. The preg this is no lie. Like, are, you, are all you all listening to? This is funny. So she does. This is for Tino. Yeah. Tino is now nearly five. So she does the pregnancy test. And it's negative. Just one line. One line. So I phones my brother up and I says to my twin brother, oh, Aurora's just done a pregnancy test. But don't worry. It's only one line. And then my brother says, no. Go and get the pregnancy test. See if there's a faint line. Now, I was like, no, 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 she's not pregnant. She's not pregnant. I'd thrown, I had thrown the pregnancy test in the bin. I had thrown the pregnancy test in the bin. She was not pregnant, yeah? So my brother says, go and check. Go and check in the bin. I said, it's in the bin. He went, no, no, go and check. I went out to the bin, pulled up, put my arm into the bin, yeah, quite a big, deep bin, pulled out the pregnancy test, had a look at it, and there was a very, very faint line. Like, you could hardly see it, hardly see it. Then I read the instructions, and the instructions said, faint line means you're pregnant. Faint line means you're pregnant. Ta-da! So, fifth baby, 53 years old, fifth baby. So that is why we have five kids. It's not my fault. It's my wife's fault. She missed the pill a couple of days. <laughs> but we love them. We love them. We worship them. It's the best thing that ever happened to us. Me and my wife are completely happy that it happened. But for me, a man in his 50s, um, bit of a shock. Bit of a shock. My wife's 41. Bit of a shock, guys. Bit of a shock. Anyway, I thought I'd tell you that story. So let's carry on reading the questions. Now, someone from America sent me this. Yeah, you. I worship them. I, it's the best thing that ever happened to me, guys. It actually makes me feel young. And I actually think it makes me look young. It's part of the reason I exercise a lot. I run a lot. I eat well. I do weightlifting. I want to be young for my kids. I want to run with my kids, play with my kids. And I do. So... The keto diet also saved my life. Dr. Ken Berry saved my life on YouTube. Dr. Ken Berry saved my life on YouTube. Right, this letter was sent to me. It's a, a and M Associates. And I think his name is Andrew. I think his name is Andrew. So he's done a bit of a, um, a read up with it about... Um, the Priscilla movie and Priscilla's rights and wrongs. And she and they want me. Oh, thank you, Pamela. I, I tell you what, I feel very lucky. Even though I'm an old dad, I feel very, very lucky. Very lucky. Right. So this, in case you want to take a picture of it, guys. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, oops. In case you want to freeze frame and take a picture. Okay, and then the other one, in case you want to do a freeze frame and take a picture. Let's, see, let, let's just let it fo focus a bit. Okay, right. So <clears throat> now we're going to do quite, we're going to do the, we're going to start from number one again because we only did number one. Guys, are you up for um, some questions? I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to hope that we get, have enough time to go through these questions. I'm just gonna quickly tell everyone on Defending Elvis that we're live. 
Right. I'll tell Deborah as well, because in case Deborah's not here. Deborah, are you awake? Let's quickly tell Deborah, because Deborah always misses it. Deborah, are you awake? Let's tell Amy as well. Amy, Auntie Amy, we're live. Who else have we missed? Um, is Diana on? Right, so the sense, so my brother has three daughters, Louis, Maria, 17, Adriana. Oh, that's a nice name. That's a coincidence. My wife's um, brother's daughter is called Adriana. Um, Martina, who's 13. That's, that's lovely. It's beautiful. Um, so, oh, thank you, uh, Angel Eyes. <clears throat> I feel great. I feel great. I do. Of course, you always love them. Yes. First man to get pregnant. Um, my daughter got pregnant with triplets and advised to abort, but she wouldn't have had three girls. Unfortunately, she lost Massey nine months through the complication. So, so does that mean? Does that mean she had two? She had two. Oh, thanks, Angel Eyes. Angel Eyes just bought me a coffee. Angel Eyes, coffee, coffee, guys. Go ahead, buy me a coffee. I love it. I love it. So, um, you know, it means everything to me, Angel Eyes. Right, let me just, who, who else can we remind? Let's remind Rose. We're live. I, do you know what? I have to remind people, as I feel guilty. Is Michelle on? We're live. Uh, who else? Thea, Pavlou, we're live. Thea's been sending me loads of information. Thank you, Thea. Very, very kind of you. Let's tell Elaine. We're live. Thing is, it takes so long for me to tell everyone that then you guys start missing out. Um, Catherine, you tell Catherine we're live. Um, oh, hi, Elizabeth. I haven't seen you on for a while. Um, I'm trying to remind, it, remind as many as I can. Um, let's have a look. Who else? We've got a new one here, Alice. We're live. Alice, hi, Alice. Just in case you guys are waking up later, good morning to you from the UK. A lot of you are in America, Australia, UK, Canada, Spain, and many other countries. I hope you had a nice sleep, guys. I hope you're waking up feeling, feeling fully refreshed. Right, let's tell Ashley. We're live. Uh -huh. Where's Diana? Diana likes to be reminded, but I know Diana uh, works a lot, doesn't she? Diana, are you on? What about Vivek? I don't think I've got Vivek's on here. Vivek's, where are you? Um, is Vivek's on? I don't I don't think I've got Vivek's on. I don't think Vivek's is on um, Facebook. Uh, Nicola likes to come on, doesn't she? We're live. Nicola, are you there? If you guys have linked to anyone, please remind them. Please remind them, because I know they I know they want to be reminded. And we know that the notifications at the moment are useless. Useless. Philomena. So the, whilst I'm telling everyone we're live, the first question, we're doing a questionnaire in case you don't know, guys. Did Elvis love both Priscilla and Anne Margaret? Did Elvis love both Priscilla and Anne Margaret? Please answer that, and I'm going to top up my tea. Have a look, have a look, have a look. So, did Elvis love both Priscilla and Anne Margaret? Let's play on my video. Hmm. Oh, that one doesn't seem to want to work. Let's put Lisa Marie on. Oh, my wife's home. 
My wife's home. Let's just see what happens, guys. Right. I think my wife's going to go upstairs, so we're probably going to be all right. Um, don't tell my wife I told you my secret. Don't tell my wife I told you our secrets about the baby. Shh. Okay. Um, right. Let's have a look. Um, right, I'm just li live at the moment. I'm still live. I've only just gone on because I've been out for ages. I've only just gone on. You want a what? Um, I can, well, I can. I, let me. I'll put this one. I'm just going to put a video on quickly, guys. Um, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to go through the questions. But I remember the question: Did Elvis love both Priscilla and Anne Margaret? And you have said. Karen and Margaret, yes. Priscilla, maybe. Um, so have a look. Hi, Chicky Blue. You have the same birthday as Anne Margaret. Chicky Blue loved Anne Margaret. I'm a big Anne Margaret fan, guys. A big Anne Margaret fan. Okay, you got my reminder then, Michelle. Let's have a look. Don't think Linda has Facebook. It's, guys, uh, so Pamela says probably. Okay, so I'm going to quickly play a video. That, um, this video was sent to me by Amy Collett, our researcher, and it's to do with Priscilla lying about, um, how can I say it? She, Priscilla has always said that she had nothing to do with the Priscilla film, Sophia Coppola's Priscilla film, yeah? She's always said it. She had nothing to do with it. So um, Amy Collett, our advisor, Auntie Amy, sent me this. I've got to quickly carry something into the car for my wife. So I'm going to play this. I think you'll find it interesting, guys. Whilst I... Let's, have, let's find it. Whilst I hate... Actually, no. Actually, no. Actually, I'm going to play that in a second. Hang on. Something else to play that I remember I was going to play you. Did any of you see? That's what I'm saying is that just because you don't like what some someone did at one point doesn't. Videos. I think that is broken heart. Um, and the idea. Now, have you heard? Do we remember we had a discussion with Sally Hoddle, the author of the book Destined to Die Young? Well, she believes that you cannot die of a broken heart. I'm going to put that on for you while I carry this thing in for my wife. So remember, Sally Hoddle is the one that told us that we're not allowed to have opinions about Priscilla, that we're bad Elvis fans if we have Priscilla opinions. If we say anything negative about Priscilla, we, she told us off. She said we were naughty. This is her latest video saying you, do, you cannot die from a broken heart. And then we'll come back. We'll carry on doing the questions. OK, guys? Hey everyone, Sally Hodell here, author of Destin to Die Young and Destin the Fly. Today's elephant in the room is all about a broken heart um, and the idea of telling history through that narrative and the challenges of that. So we okay. hear often, you know, so and so died from a broken heart. And in literature and art, that certainly has its place, but in history, you know, I personally don't feel that it has a place because so right. much can be right. lost right. to that. You know, I say all the time that Elvis is the biggest victim of romanticism and sensationalism. That is certainly true. And I think we've had this idea surrounding him for so long that he just had such a broken heart from Gladys dying that he never recovered. Um, I certainly don't believe that to be true, and we'll talk about why. But I think because of the way literature and art kind of romanticizes that broken heart idea and the possibility of actually dying from it, which is not really possible. Um, and don't get me wrong, the grief does have mental and physical and emotional strain, which impacts your entire well-being. 
Uh, I understand that completely. But dying from a broken heart is really a literature based idea. It's Shakespearean, you know, so to speak. So I just want to explore that today as the elephant in the room, something that's hard to talk about, uh, something that maybe we shouldn't, you know, you feel like you shouldn't challenge it because emotionally and feeling based, you know, if, if you look at history from a how does it feel, how did they feel, then that, sure, it has merit because there was a great deal of sadness attached to all of this loss and grief. But from a historical standpoint, um, it covers up real ailments, it covers up real cause of death. And again, for our loved ones, that's not an issue. But for historical figures, it really does become an issue over time. And that's what I want to talk about today. So, um, you know, overall, it really does capture the idea of something I talk about quite often. And that is the idea that romanticism and sensationalism hurt the history of Elvis Presley. And they've hurt him over and over and over since the very beginning, and most definitely since he passed at the young age of 42. So why is that, right? We can look at the sensationalism, and it's pretty simple. You know, unfortunately for Elvis, um, after he turned 40, and in the late 70s, the tabloid craze was kind of taking off. And then he dies in 1977. And it just continues that whole odd tabloid thing of the late seventies through the eighties, it, it reaches its peak and it continues. And unfortunately that is timed with Elvis's demise. And then, you know, any random day you're in line at the grocery store and you'll see that Elvis was abducted by aliens. He didn't actually die. Right. Um, news and journalism, uh, the grocery store magazine line <laughs> was not always like that. It's not like that so much anymore, right? But um, in the late 70s, throughout the 80s, it became a huge problem and it translated into TV too. And it's why we have those, you know, wacky interviews with Dee Stanley on Geraldo and or Donahue or whatever it was and why Bill Bixby is hosting a show as Elvis Still Alive because Elvis just happened to die in that time frame where journalism took on this crazy sensationalized momentum and it didn't stop. So that hurt Elvis and he had nothing to do with it. It was just right, timing, right? Uh, so romanticism works in the same way. Romanticism has hurt Elvis from the very beginning um, because he becomes Elvis Presley. He has this incredible rise and then his mother dies, right? And that kind of haunts his story forever. And then her story is mistold and his is, is flawed. And, and then it's trickled down to Lisa Marie somehow, and, and not only her understanding of family history, but her story as well. So I just want to talk about from a historical standpoint how um, complicated that is for famous people, for historical people, uh, because we want to romanticize them. We want to feel like we know them. Blah, 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 yeah. You know, that's a natural human um, pull. But the other part so, of um, history to be... Um, I'm not going to let her talk anymore because I, I literally think she talks out of her ass, guys. I've watched most of it. I completely disagree with her. I don't know if you, how many of you guys know, but we have strong issues with Sally Hoddle because she released a video. Now, remember, she is the author of the book Destined to Die Young. Yeah. Now, I like the book Destined to Die Young because it talks about Elvis. Um, and his medical history, his medical problems, it goes right back into his, uh, the generations, you know, the Smiths, the Smith bloodline. But, and it's had a lot of success. It's a, it's a, a really, it sold really well. It made her a lot of money. She's even been invited to Elvis Week at least once. So the fans have really supported her, Yeah. They put money in her pocket. Elvis has helped her make money. Now, we don't mind if she wants to make money showing Elvis in a good light, proving that he wasn't a, just a normal drug addict, proving that he needed his medications, that he had inherited some genetic problems, and that, that he had genuine, serious medical conditions. You know, whether it be his liver, his colon, his glycoma on his eyes high blood pressure, you name it, bone cancer, call it what you want, that he'd had, that because his um, his mother's parents were first cousins, that caused problems, yeah, Elvis's 
um, Gladys's parents or first cousins, that caused medical problems, yeah? So we like the book, Destined to Die Young. I'm not saying it's fully correct. There's some things in that book that Amy Collett, our researcher, has told us um, may not be true, yeah? But I'm saying this. She then went on to release a video about a, a couple of months ago to tell us off, to call us haters. She said that we, because we have negative, so-called negative views about Priscilla or the Memphis Mafia, she then told us off and said that we are doing harm to Elvis's legacy. Heart and that Elvis would not want us to defend him. We defend Elvis, don't we? We defend him. We want the truth exposed. We want Priscilla's ex uh, wrongdoing exposed so we can defend Elvis. And she told us off for doing that. She, she literally spoke to us like we were children. She's never apologized because I did ask her for an apology. Yeah. So, you know, it's done and dusted, guys. We made a couple of videos about it. We complained to Sally Hoddle. She's deleted all our comments. Um, has been blocking it on Facebook. She's been blocking anyone that tries to say you're out of order, trying to tell us what to do as Elvis fans, especially because the Elvis fans are what put money in her pocket. Yeah. So we're upset with Sally Hoddle. You don't tell the Elvis fans how to think. Yeah. So then she releases this ridiculous video, this is a few days, this is like four or five days ago. I, I saw it last week. I was going to do it then, but I forgot. She's now telling people that you can't die of a broken heart. That's so ridiculous. How many people here actually think you cannot die of a broken heart? I, I know people that um, who have had a broken heart, guys. So I actually am insulted. And then she uses Elvis's name. She uses Gladys and Priscilla. She uses Elvis's life to try and verify and back up her opinions about whether or not you can die from a broken heart. And then she tries to be logical with it, scientific about it, like a doctor. Now, this woman is not a doctor. She has no medical qualifications. She's just a book writer a book writer that does research. She's not an Elvis expert. Yes, she's done a lot of research. Yes, she traveled to Tupelo and met the Smiths to research her book, but she has no medical background. So for her now to start telling us how the human brain works, how the heart works, how we think, how the body works, it's ridiculous. She now thinks she's a doctor and a medical expert and an Elvis expert. Yeah, she's none of the things. She's none of any of those things. But one thing I will say to Sally Hoddle, how dare you tell us as fans what we are and are not allowed to say on how we defend Elvis, how we expose the wrongdoing to Elvis, how we protect and defend the bloodline, Elvis and his bloodline. You're out of order. Sally Hoddle, you're out of order. That book, Destined to Die Young, did some good for Elvis, and we're pleased that you wrote that book. It did a lot of good. But don't then think that gives you the right to tell us off, tell us what to do. Talk down to us. Talk to us like we're uneducated children. Just because not all of us have got degrees doesn't mean we're stupid. I would say sometimes people that are uneducated are more intelligent. They have a lot more common sense. Yeah? Yeah. So you're out of order. And so this video that you've just written, that that's not written, that you released last week, saying that you can't die of a broken heart, is bullshit. You need to climb down off your pedestal. You're just like us. You're no better. Just because you've had an education doesn't make you better. You need to stop speaking about Elvis as if you think you're an expert because you're not, as if you think you're medically trained. You're not as if you are an expert on how the human body works and the brain works, how the heart works, you are not. You're just a book writer. That's all you are. And you were lucky you had some success on the book Destined to Die Young. Now, I completely accept that Sally Hoddle worked really hard, really hard on that book. 
and has created success from nothing. Credit where credit's due. Fair play to you, Sally. You created a best-selling book. Well, I'm not sure if it was best-selling, but a very interesting book. But don't then talk down to us. Amy's here with us now. Amy Collett has told me a lot of the facts in the book, Destined to Die Young, are not correct. Are not correct. So Sally Hoddle, rein it in. Calm down. Show some respect to the fans and know your place. Know your place. You are no better than we are. You are no better than we are. And I say that with respect. I don't hate you. I don't dislike you. I, I offer you an olive branch to join Team Elvis and to apologise to the Elvis fans. You're very welcome here. We think your book has also done a lot of good. I'm not against your book. I am not against the book Destined to Die Young. It's a good book, even if it's not fully correct. It does some good for Elvis. It helps defend Elvis. So I'm not against you, Sally Hoddle, but you need to calm it down, my friend. And the last two videos that you have posted, you're out of order. Stop talking down to us like we're children. Anyway, guys, next question. Let me just see what time it is so I know how much time I've got left. I've got, I've got 26 minutes left. Why? Did Priscilla dump her karate instructor? Was it for the same reason as to why she left Elvis to be free spirit and not a housewife? Right, Amy, we're doing part two, yeah? Amy, you know I love you. I'm rushing a bit because I know i got to get the kids at three o'clock. So we got 26 minutes. Then i got to go. i got my cup of tea. Thank you for joining us. Amy is Auntie Amy. She's our researcher. We love Amy. Right. Come on, guys. Let's get answering these questions. So the question is, why did Priscilla regret her affair with her dance instructor? And then it says, all oh, right, okay, sorry. Right, slow down. So I missed the question. Number two. Why did Priscilla regret her affair with her dance instructor, Steve Peck? Now, I don't know that she did regret it. Oh, I know, Amy. I don't know that she did regret it. Amy, do you think Priscilla regretted her affair with her dance instructor? What we do know is that she ended it pretty quick when she was found out. Uh, oh, thanks for saying so. Um, twin, I've decided to do Elvis Week in 2020. So I will be brave in the Memphis heat. Elaine, you've changed your logo. You're confusing me. Elaine, you've changed your logo. I like your new logo. Hey, uh, Deborah's awake. Deborah is awake. I don't think she did. She says when she saw Elvis perform at the comeback special, she found Elvis sexy. Come on. She slept with that man every day. Now, Amy, um, we I think you may have missed it. But we were talking a lot about the Steve Peck affair. We, we, we read out in detail the affair that's admitted on page 262 of the book Elvis and Me. We, we did substitute the word dance. We replaced it with the word sex. It was hilarious. You need to go back and watch it. It's the last live stream. We had a lot of fun. Um, Let's have a look. Um, Priscilla was moving on to the next man after Stone. He served his purpose. Right, so Valvis, do you think Steve Peck served his purpose? Elaine, Steve Peck was a toy to her. She should have felt guilty for starters, but she didn't have Elvis at home. Her husband yet has an affair. Disgraceful, no morals. Oh, I'm going to agree with that. Disgraceful and no morals. So, Karen, I don't think she regretted it. Um, when the next chapter, Elvis, she kept contact with Steve through and she brought him to the comeback special. Yes, and Amy, there's a picture of it, isn't there? Is that is that that picture that's being shared around of Priscilla at the comeback special? I think it was a rehearsal with Steve Peck, the dance instructor. Is that genuine? Um, 
She says she was done with him early in 68, but clearly she wasn't. Thea, if she regretted it, I would guess it's because Elvis refused her to come back to him and his house, and she made a fool of him and then tried to destroy him. Thanks, Thea. Um, right, so Jane wants to go as well. To, is this 2027 Elvis week? Uh, I've changed my profile to an Elvis pointing finger. Yes. Um, morals of an alley cat, says Debbie. Chicky Blue, she had groupies. Priscilla was management of them all. Lou, I don't believe Priscilla regretted any of her affairs. Thank you, Vicenzo. I, I think she got caught. My view with Steve Peck, she got caught. She, at that point, she was still quite besotted with Elvis. I think the Steve Peck affair was to get a reaction from Elvis, to get a reaction from Elvis. She wanted more attention from Elvis. So it was an experiment that went wrong. The Steve, Fair, Steve Peck affair was an experiment that went wrong. She got caught. Um, can I ask, how did she get caught? Amy, you might know. How did Priscilla, how did we find out about Steve Peck? How did we find out? People keep saying that it's Gregory Peck's son, but it's not. People keep saying it's Gregory Peck's son, but it is not. Right, next. Elvis knew and didn't care. Uh, she says she cut it off. Yeah, in the book, it says she cut it off, yeah? Elaine says Elvis didn't give a rat's ass. Do you know what? I don't agree. Shall I tell you why, Elaine? Because, the come on, the baby was just born. Lisa Marie was beautiful. Lisa Marie, who we love, was just born and six to 12 weeks old. Yeah. They'd only been married for less than a year when Priscilla is unfaithful. Yeah. So I think he did care. I think he was rushing back from his movie sets in his converted bus to try and spend time with Lisa Marie because he worshipped Lisa Marie. So I actually think he did care. And I think the, the, the fact that he cared so much is why he wouldn't sleep with her. He was so angry with her, he refused to sleep with her. So this bullshit rumour that goes around that he won't sleep with a woman that's had a child is bullshit. Bullshit. He just didn't want to sleep with her because she shagged the dance instructor. That's my opinion, guys. Um, but Elvis knew with her late hours she was keeping... He knew. So, yeah, so you're saying Elvis had a feeling it was going on. Yeah? I think I've read that somewhere. Steve Pratt and Sabrina, anyone post a photo to the group, please? It's, I mean, it's not a very clear photo, Nicola, but a, I think Amy's got it. Post it on the on the 24 chat. Is that okay, guys? Uh, I agree with Elvis knew he wasn't a fool. Thank you, Michelle. Elvis did not share his woman with anyone. He was done after she soiled herself. I agree with that. E Elaine, you, you, you word it in such a nice way. <laughs> soiled herself. <laughs> <laughs> soiled herself that's just hilarious <laughs> oh you give me the giggles soiled herself right so i need to calm 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 um uh let's have a look um i'm sorry she had hot pants there's not many women trying to do all that right after they have a baby i agree i agree don't forget i've had five babies with my wife yeah the sex thing is is quite a while away it's a good four months i would say does that sound is that too much information uh, i love how strongly lisa looked like a father yes chicky blue they do you know what you say that someone sent me a video i'm going to show you quickly um i stored it on my videos the wife is back Right, I stored it on my video. Let's have a look. Uh, 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 hi, beautiful wife. Um, so, we just carried a giant dollhouse in a car. You didn't see it, guys. We were outside. Did they take it all right? Yeah, I just kind of got filmed as well. All right, so it's all, go it's all going through, yeah? Well, yeah, it's kind of. But she's like, I just think, how are you? She's like, oh, I've seen it. I've just got, you're my coffee. Well, she's like, you can get your 
Wow. My wife, because it's not been three months, she was like, because it's not been more than three months, you can skip straight back in rather than go through the whole process. My wife loves the school that my kids go to. She's worked there before. She had to take a break. Uh, now she's getting better. She wants to go back to work at the school that she loves working in. And they've just told her that she can. Thumbs up, my man. Thumbs up, bro. I, Aurora, I told them about how about Yasmin and Tino. I told them about announcing at the wedding that we may have a child, another baby. I was joking. And then I told her about, uh, told them about the um, pregnancy test we found in the bin. In the bin. They did find it hilarious. They found it hilarious. But it is great news. We love that school. And it's only, it's, it's walking distance. And it's like 30 seconds drive. So, and they all love her. And the, the other teachers are really nice, really kind, lovely people. Good news. Great news. Right. Let me, like you were just saying um, that she looks, someone sent me a video. Someone sent me a video of how much Lisa looks like a father. Is this it? Let's have a look. I think this is it. Um, come on, are you gonna work? She's a bona fide celebrity. Uh, oh no, this this is a different one, but I'm gonna play it anyway. We love Lisa. Yeah, she's definitely getting better, Deborah. She's improved a lot. She's so beautiful. She is stunning. She's a sexy girl. Beautiful and stunning. Love it. Love it, guys. And and um, she's just a beautiful. She's so stunning. And let me see if I can find the one that someone sent me. Um, you know that. Let's have a look. And then the other thing, I. Uh, uh finley has been has liked a couple of my posts finley elvis's um granddaughter lisa's uh one of the twins finley has liked one of my posts so she knows we exist guys finley knows we exist so we, we got their back haven't we guys we got their back um i know she's only 16 so i don't start chatting with them i just um if i get a heart or a like i i'm I'll, that's good enough for me guys um <clears throat> right let's have a look um let's just see if i can find that one of you sent it me it's such a good video is this it let's have a look um it was a really 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 good video showing her um being it was it was a picture of her face and a picture of elvis in an interview Let's see if it's this one. No. No, it's not that one. No, I don't think I'm going to find it, which is annoying. Oh, this is her. This is interesting. This is interesting. Um, someone asked her for an autograph because she wants to. She wants a, a body tattoo. So she signs her name on someone's tattooed arm that's going to be turned into a tattoo. Are you ready, guys? Let me just try and let me get the volume up on it as well. To make sure the sharpie's yeah. working. Right, are you ready, guys? <laughs> you want to practice on this? Yeah. Just to make sure the sharpie's yeah. working? No, it's working. All right. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, can I just do my initials? You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Where? Your, where are your eyes? Well, I have tattoos. I know that you, you know. You can say it's all the way down. Right there. Right there. 
And that's going to be turned into a tattoo, guys. It's just the weirdest thing you've ever been asked to do. No. Okay. <laughs> I think I've done it before, but it freaks me out. Why? Because I know it's permanent. Because <laughs> you're worth it, right? Come on. Do it. Love it. Absolutely love that. Right, let me. I just love the fact that she took the time to go up to some random lady and sign. She does. She does. She has a beautiful uh, autograph, beautiful signature, and the way that she. It's very arty the way that she signs her the LMP, and she does it really well. And you can tell that was going to be a really nice tattoo. That was. Um, let's have a look. Let's just see if I can find the other one because the other one was really good. Where are you? One of you sent it me. This is what's... Is it this one? Let's have a look. If I ever get anything... I oh, know this is a different one. Love it. See, these are, this is what you guys send me. And I always save them. If I if I see something I like, I save it. Uh, ah, there we are. I found it. Right, are you ready, guys? This is a comparison of Lisa Marie. Um, uh, you'll like Amy. You've probably already seen this, but I'm going to play it. I know Amy, obviously, um, has a real close connection with Lisa, has actually met Lisa Marie many times. Amy it almost feels like Lisa is her sister. They're very... They, there's definitely a special connection there. Right, are you ready? Now, this is the one I was trying to say where it shows uh, a young Elvis. Uh, I think he's in his office at Graceland's. I think it's the army. He's just come out of the army, I'm guessing. Yeah. So let's play it, guys. Love it, love it. Stuff like that, I love it. Oh, gives me goose goose pimples. Right, next question. We've only got 20 minutes. Um, why did Priscilla dump her karate instructor? Was it for the same reason as to why she left Elvis to be for a free spirit and not a housewife? I don't think Priscilla was ever a housewife. So let's let's keep the the main question. There's no way Priscilla was a housewife. They had cooks and cleaners and maids and the Memphis Mafia. She was never a housewife. Um, so the question can be: Why did Priscilla dump her karate instructor? He wasn't even a proper instructor. He was a karate champion. He wasn't actually an instructor, was he at first? So why did she dump Mike Stone? Why did she dump Mike Stone? That's the question. Come on, guys, we can do this. There's 34 of you watching. Why did she dump Mike Stone? This is a good question. To move on to the next cash machine. But was it Robert Kardashian after him? Who was the boy, she, the man she was seeing after Mike Stone? She probably found someone else. That makes sense. She definitely wasn't a loyal girl, was she? Uh, she says that she sold his story to a tabloid. Oh, yes, I've read that. Yes, Amy. She found out that he sold his story to a tabloid and dumped him. I did hear that. That's a good answer, Amy, because I've read that a couple of times. Um, could you imagine your boyfriend selling a story on you? Not good, is it? So it was Robert Kardashian, the famous lawyer who was the parents of the Kardashian family, yeah? Keeping with the Kardashians. Is that what it's called, I think? Salvatore. Salvatore, how are you? 
I love it when Salvatore tells us about his stories about meeting Elvis. Salvatore, we love your stories about meeting Elvis. You were surrounded by girls all trying to grab Elvis and they wouldn't let you through. Is that right? Because I do read the comments, Salvatore. Surrounded by Elvis girl fans in the 1950s, 60s, 70s. I think it was 70s you were talking about. And they wouldn't let you through. Is that right? I think Kirk Kiorkian was the next one after Stone. Thank you. Right. Kirk Kiorkian. Let's look him up. Kirk Kiorkian. Kirk Kiorkian. Let's get him up, guys, because I have no idea who he is. Kirk Kiorkian. <clears throat> Kirk, let's have a look. I'm trying to get the spelling. It's a bit of an odd name, isn't it? Kirk Kiorkian. I don't think I'm going to find it, guys. Ah, here we are. Oh, him, yeah, the billionaire. The bit, no, I do know about this guy. Not the best looking man. Very, very wealthy. So she went out with a billionaire for a while. There's even a stamp for him. Right. Um, he claims that he didn't say. He says he cut it off when she wanted a career in Hollywood and he didn't want to go all to all the Hollywood parties. He owned an international where Elvis performed. Right, he owned... Right, okay, I'm learning, Amy. So I didn't know this. Kirk Kjorken owned the International Hotel, yeah? Uh, where Elvis performed, which changed its name, didn't it, eventually? What was it called, eventually? What was the name change, Amy? And I believe that he was married at the time, right? The Google says Stone sold a story called How I Stole Elvis's Wife. Yes, and that's the one I've read. Okay, next question. Why did Priscilla Sola, not marry Robert Kardashian? Why did Priscilla not marry Robert Kardashian? I think he had proposed to her. I don't know the answer to that. Anyone know? Uh, he ended it when he realized she was only interested in his money. She definitely used it. Mike Stone was used and dropped like a rock. That is fat. And Mike Stone, if you're ever watching us, the karate champion who broke his own family up, whose wife was pregnant with a four year old baby as well, Mike Stone ran off with Priscilla, dumped his pregnant wife that he was married to that had and he had a four-year-old child with girl with her you sound like a real nice guy mate mike stone quality um so let's have a look i'm just reading the hilton that's it i knew it changed the name the hilton um robert didn't want her right okay he but he was wasn't he still in love with, what's the name of his wife? What's, do you know, Rora, the Kardashian, the mum? Do you know what she's called? Yeah, you know you know the keeping with the Kardashians. What's the mum called, guys? What is Robert Kardashian's um, wife called? I've forgotten. Uh, he wanted a housewife to have babies and realised Priscilla wasn't going to be that. Right, OK, so Mike Stone wanted Priscilla to have babies. Yeah, but she was very ambitious. She wanted to get on with her acting career, promoting products, um, and uh, her many other entrepreneurial ambitions that she had. She was obsessed with being on TV. I know that. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Mike Stone did an interview. Yes, I've seen the interviews, Nicola, and they are very eye-opening. And we're, we're gonna review them. We've already re reviewed them twice. But we are going to review the Mike Stone interviews. There's two very good ones, quite recent. And um, the stuff that he admits to is disgusting, honestly. He, that guy is a bad apple. He's a bad apple. It's disgusting how he excuses his behavior, the way he treated his wife, literally secretly shagging behind his wife, his pregnant wife's back. And he had a four year old little girl. Madness. And he split up Elvis and Priscilla. Don't forget, two families split up and Lisa Marie was dragged away from her father, Elvis, because of 
because of Priscilla wanting to shag Mike Stone. That's the bottom line. I know it's a pretty brunt, brutal word, but that's the truth of it. She wanted to get naked with Mike Stone. <laughs> so funny oh my god Mike Stone the karate champion that got dumped um did he not get fed up with her I don't feel that Stone stole X's wife Stone stole Elvis's wife I think Elvis gave her to him let me just get that in my head right hi Tanya I hope you're well I don't feel that Stone stole Elvis's wife I think Elvis gave her to him hmm well, I see it differently. They, they were having a fake marriage for about two years. Yeah, they were going on holiday. They had a second honeymoon. Uh, they were seeing Muhammad Ali, Tom Jones. They went to the award ceremony. Yeah, you know, for every dream I ever dreamt. You know that one. I think Elvis I'd put, was putting on a fake front. I think the, way, the the sex in the marriage was over because of Priscilla's unfaithfulness. But I do think Elvis tried to keep a brave face on, keep the public image of Priscilla and Lisa and Elvis good. But I think when he found out about Mike Stone, the secret affair that she had for a year behind his back, don't forget she was sleeping with Mike Stone secretly for a year behind Elvis's back, behind Francis Stone's back. Francis Stone had become friends with Priscilla, which makes it even worse. But don't forget, Francis Stone, who was married, to Mike Stone, also was pregnant and had a four-year-old, three- or four-year-old girl. So the whole thing is disgusting. The whole thing is disgusting, guys. <clears throat> um, let's have a look. Right, I've only got this. How long have I got? I've got 10 minutes. We've been on an hour. Guys, we've been on an hour. Let's try and catch up with your comments. Yes, uh, Vicenzo. Uh, Robert Kardashian was OJ Simpson's lawyer. Thank you. I knew about that. That's great info. Right. So if I miss anyone's comments, guys, I'm very sorry. I don't mean to miss people's comments, but I'm, they do go up quite fast. I do talk a lot. So while I'm waffling, I do miss comments. I'm really sorry. To make a balanced opinion, I need to read Mike's book. Yeah. Okay. Um, th you mean the book that he said had nothing to do with Priscilla and that he was not going to use Priscilla or Elvis's name to make money and then he named it, my, you know, Priscilla and me and Elvis. What was the name of Mike Stone's book? The book that, oh, I'll never make money from Elvis. I will never make money from Elvis. Go and watch the interview, guys. I would never make money from Elvis and Priscilla. Oh, no. Or Lisa Marie. And what does he call his book? Guys, tell me the name of Mike Stone's book. <clears throat> Robert, Robert, all right, Amy says, Robert, what, the housewife? Uh, quickly, just rushing through the comments, guys, because I know we don't have long. Marco um, was the exception. Did she want another heir to his money that, that he had? Let's have a look. You, you mean Marco, Marco Garibaldi Garcia? Is he even alive? I know he's on Facebook because uh, Elaine sent me. I think Elaine sent it me. After Kardashian, she went on to the French hairdresser. Yeah, I, I think I know that name. She dumped the hairdresser when she met Michael Edwards. Now, we all have very strong opinions of Michael Edwards. We're waiting for Michael Edwards to be arrested to the authorities, to the police. Please do your job and arrest Michael Edwards for the alleged abuse against poor Lisa Marie Presley. Also, please investigate Priscilla because she was the mother in charge of a 10-year-old girl that was allegedly abused for four to five years and that Priscilla was so infatuated with Michael Edwards, she was too scared to do anything about it and wouldn't believe Lisa Marie. Poor Lisa Marie allegedly has been seriously damaged by what happened through those years. Seriously, by allegedly, for entertainment purposes, just opinions, this whole show is just an opinion, for entertainment purposes, allegedly, the damage that Michael Edwards may have done. 
Uh, Louis, you should train the dogs to go to the bathroom on her book. That will save you time taking them for a walk. Yeah, Salvatore, you're cheeky. Just just because you met Elvis, Salvatore. It's not fair. Yeah, guys, congratulations on having a new president. I have nothing to do with politics. I, I, I don't know anything about Trump or Camilla. Congratulations. I hope you're happy. Um, uh, sent you a snippet of Robert's, but oh, thank you. We'll get, obviously, we'll, we've only got a few minutes left, but let's have a look. Amy Collett, Auntie Amy has sent me. Right. Oh, can, I can read this. It's only short. Amy has just sent me this, okay? Auntie Amy, Amy Collett is our researcher. We all love Amy. She's part of the family. Priscilla once tried to make dinner for Robert because he kept asking her. So Priscilla said that one night she cooked asparagus and she made this and she made that and she went out of her way to make it perfect and he hated it. She said that after the meal, he never suggested that she make dinner for him again. She couldn't cook. She was no maid to Elvis. So this question here, uh, this a subscriber has sent this to me. Just so you know, this has been sent to me by a subscriber from America, yeah? Andrew, so thank you, Andrew. This is the envelope, so I'd like him, Andrew, to contact me so I can thank him for the effort that he's made. If any of you wanna send me a letter or a book or anything, I'll we'll go through it on here. Uh, uh, Linda knows I'm not big on reading books, but feel free to send me a book, it's fine. Um, so the next question. Why um, why did Terry O'Neill depart from Priscilla? Why did Terry O'Neill depart from Priscilla only two months after the relationship? Now, that'll be a tough one for Amy. Amy, are you going to know the answer to that? That's a tough one. Why did Terry O'Neill... Was he a photographer? I think he was a photographer, wasn't he, guys? Why did Terry O'Neill depart from Priscilla only two months after the relationship? There we go. I think we've got enough time for one more. Yeah, she de Linda. Hi, Linda. She definitely couldn't cook. I don't think with the time statute has passed, he can't be prosecuted. Yes, but we can at least shake his, shake his core. He can at least be investigated. At least. At least do that. Um. We want the world. He, he needs to be put on trial by the fans. Yeah, by the fans. Right. Um, she can't cook. She nearly poisoned Elvis once with a lasagna. Yeah, I've read that story. And undercooked chicken nearly poisoned. I can't keep up with this woman and all her BF. Hi, Valvis. Hope you're well. What do you mean have a pet name, Angel Eyes? Angel Eyes is Helen, isn't it? It's Helen the singer. Helen sings beautifully. We like Helen. Helen's a singer. Uh, oh, I know. Ah, do you though? Do you? The question was, why did Terry O'Neill depart Priscilla after only a two-month relationship? So what's the time? We've got three minutes. And then i got to go. Uh, her name's Angel. She's a two-year-old Maltese. All right, okay. That sounds really cute. Angel! 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 Come on! Angel! Come on! <laughs> right, I overcook. I knew... I, I never knew your name was Helen. <clears throat> Beautiful Helen. Do you mind if I call you Helen? Um, Salvatore, she's a good singer, mate. She, if you want her to sing you a cool Elvis song, she's got it. She's got the talent. She's got the X Factor. She's an American Idol. Uh, Terry time has been up so many, many. So, guys, unfortunately, right, we're up to, we are up to question, we're only up to question five. We have another 
10 questions. And we're coming back to do them. 10 more. In case you want to see the questions, you can read them. You can take a picture frame of that. Freeze frame it. And then we're going to do them. We're going to come back and do them. But I've got to get the kids from school. I've already walked the dogs. And I've already done a run and I've done my weights. Oh, that one's not. There we are. That's better. Okay. So I do want to thank the person who sent me this. Thank you so much, Andrew. Andrew, thank you. Please contact me. Let me know you're still around because that was sent a few weeks ago. Okay, guys, I'm out of here. I'm going to get the kids from school. I'm going to try and come back on and finish these questions. I'm going to do my best. But thank you, everyone. Thanks, Amy, for joining. As usual, if you like what I'm doing, send us a coffee. Send us a thank you. Super thank you. Call it what you want. Please become a member. It's only a dollar a month. Please subscribe. Please like. And I'll be back. I'm hoping to do one more live today. I'm hoping. I'm really going to try to. Take care, guys. I might do it when I get back because the kids might be going somewhere. So there's a chance I'll, I'm going to be back on in half an hour. Maybe. Maybe. Not definite. Take it easy, guys. Love you all. You're the best. Amy. Auntie Amy, thank you for helping us with our research. It means a lot. All of you guys loved it. We had a right good time, didn't we? Um, thank you very much. Have a great day. And I hopefully will do one more live. Cannot guarantee it. But I really want to. Take care, guys.